What? Hi, I'm Chip and welcome to the channel. If you're a service technician and you're looking to hone your diagnostic skills, or maybe perhaps you're a do-it-yourselfer and your washing machine has suddenly stopped working, I'd like to know why and how to fix it so that you can get those piles of dirty laundry off your floor and back in the closet, then you've come to the right place. Be sure to hang around to the end for tips on making some special devices that you can use to diagnose and fix these problems. Now, number one, the first thing I always check, whether I'm out in the field or working on a machine that's been brought to the shop, are the safety devices on the washer. These are your lid switches, your lid locks on top load washers and door locks on front loaders. If your machine stopped during the wash cycle and you're staring at a tub full of water with your clothes floating around, then your lid switch is probably going to be the culprit. On the old school Whirlpool style machine, that's the kind where you select the cycle then you pull the knob out to start the wash, then the lid switch can be found either under the console at the back left corner or it may be attached under the cabinet top and connected by wires to a plug that comes up from the bottom near the center of the cabinet under the console. Using the simple devices I'll show you at the end of this video, you can test whether your lid switch has failed. If you have a modern washing machine that you select the cycle, then you push a button to start, and you wash your freezers after filling with water, then you probably have a bad lid lock or switch. Now these two functions are combined into one component and will probably need to be replaced. And one clue that the problem is your lid lock is a constant clicking sound when the machine tries to begin agitation during the wash cycle. Now on a front load washer, the machine just freezes once the start button is pushed, and you'll have to change the door lock mechanism in this case. Number two, if you start a wash cycle using either hot or warm water on the temperature selector, then you come back to see that your machine has pumped the water out and stopped on the rinse cycle. Then you probably have a stuck cold water valve. The reason for this is that most modern washers use cold water during rinse cycle, the rinse cycle as you can see here in these pictures. The clue is that the wash temperature is over the rinse temperature. Or for this G machine, it's placarded here as all cold rinses. If a water valve has failed, it will either be an electrical failure or a mechanical failure. You can test the electrical validity of the valve by using a multimeter I set to test continuity by selecting ohms on your multimeter and checking to see if the windings in the solenoid coil are still connected. Now you can also have mechanical failures of a valve and that prevents the valve from opening or closing in the case of a leaking valve due to the debris that's invaded the mechanism or wear on the moving parts inside the valve. In either case, the valve should be replaced. If the valve checks good, and then the problem may be the temperature controller, in which case the component must be replaced. The third thing I always check for if numbers one and two aren't the cause of the problem is an interruption in the water supply. If you are a technician during your preliminary interview with your client, you should always ask, have you had any recent plumbing done? Has the machine been recently moved? Sometimes the client's moved to a new location and it's unaware of any plumbing issues at the new location. You want to look behind the machine, be sure the water's on, there are no kinks in the hoses, shut off the water supply to the cold water valve and remove it from the machine. Inspect the screens and the water inlets for debris and calcification. If there's an adequate water supply and there's no obstructions, then the problem could be our reason number four. Has there been any recent electrical work? Check the power supply to the washer. Be sure there's 120 volts at the receptacle, uh, 204 in Europe. If in out, plug a lamp or radio or other device in the receptacle that the washer uses. Remove the washer cabinet and check the wiring to the motor. On Whirlpool style machines, there's often going to be a burned connector on the motor plug that prevents power from reaching the motor. If this is the problem, a new wiring harness or a new plug should be spliced into the old wiring harness to replace the defective connector. And be sure your connections are tight and secure. Examine the motor capacitor for damage swelling or leakage. Try replacing your capacitor if the motor hums but doesn't start. You can also build a device to test whether the washer motor is good. And I'll show you how to do it at the end of this video and also in this link right here. Number five. This is going to be your other category. If all these tests haven't fixed the problem, then you should suspect you have a timer problem on old school machines or a control board problem on the newer models. If you don't hear the, the timer motor running, it may have a malfunction. However, the motor might be perfectly good, but not getting power from the timer itself due to a burnt point on the inside of the, the timer. In this case, you're going to have to replace the timer. On newer machines, you'll have to enter the machine's diagnostic mode to test the control board. Now, the service diagnostic manual can be found inside the machine cabinet on the front top left corner of most uh, machines, or if you have a G or a hot point, it's going to be found on the back and bottom left side of the cabinet inside. If you can't find a service manual for your machine, then a web search for your make and model will usually find the procedure. 
that's you can enter the diagnostic mode and test your washer. If you can't enter the diagnostic mode after repeated attempts, then the chances are that your control board has been compromised and it will have to be replaced. Now if you've reached this point in the video, please check the description for my other videos that will show you how to make the devices that I mentioned earlier. These are tools that every service technician should have in his toolbox and every do-it-yourselfer should have so that the next time the missus complains that her washer's on the fritz, then you'll be the hero of the household. And thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Chip is out.